All right, take two. Check, check. What's up? Welcome to the No Mongo Podcast, a show about all things skateboarding. And my name is Rick Beta. Hopefully you had an amazing weekend, one that was filled with lots of fun, maybe lots of hot dogs, even more hot dogs. Get my drift. You can follow along on social media at Rick Beta. That's R I C K B A T A. Or email the show, nomongopodcast at gmail.com. Jumping right into it. Now, if you if you remember last week, I mentioned that I was a little bummed that I didn't get to see, you know, Jenka Mag's 999 challenge video before hopping onto the mic. And, you know, I'd been waiting patiently for it, you know. And of course, guess what? It dropped the very next day because, of course, it did. That's how it works. You know, if I would have waited just a little bit longer, but no, but I watched it during my break and it was the perfect length. You know, some of the people in the comments want it to be longer, but what else did you need to see? More vomiting? Seeing 81 360 flips, it uh, doesn't sound too exciting. Like literally, like, like you'd be done after what, like 20 max 10? You're like, okay, yeah, I get it. And how about seeing 81 hot dogs just being shoved down throats like, I guess more than once a year. We see that on July 4th, you know, but that doesn't sound fun. You'd be bored after like six hot dogs. You're like, yeah, okay, I don't need to see that. And although, you know, Bud Light would have loved the extra exposure, but 81 beers just being tossed back and or shotgun, and it, it just it isn't that exciting either. So I think three minutes and 39 seconds was the perfect length. Going into this, you know, my main concern was about the numbers that were involved. I felt that nine of at least two of the requirements was, you know, kind of a bit too much. But was my concern warranted? I say kind of, just barely though, just barely, because they did have a winner. They did have a winner at the end. Someone won. They did it. But then again, you know, I had no idea how this contest was going to go down either. So for, for some reason in my brain, I thought they they had to drink nine beers and then eat nine hot dogs and then do nine three, 360 flips. That's how my brain thought. I'm like nine, nine, nine. But that's that's not how they did it. Turns out they had to do one at a time, which made way more sense to me. I was like, duh, Rick. Come on. What? Really, Rick? Really? You, you, if you did it in that order, there was no way none of them would finish that competition. There's no way, no way in hell, because that way that way that that way makes more sense. And they even tracked uh, the numbers via like pieces of paper taped to their chest or, or back, kind of like a marathon runner, if you get my drift. But I I do I gotta ask though, so for those of you who haven't seen it yet, and you're probably asking, did it live up to the hype though, Rick? Did it? I I have to say it did. They, they went with the beer that I, I guessed would have been an option, Bud Light, which is, what, 4.2% ABV. So it wasn't going to kill the contestants. You don't want to have that. You know, I knew it wasn't going to be like a Waldo's or a tor- Torpedo, my two favorites at the moment. No way in hell. I mean, three of either one of those, those beers, and you're done. You are done. You know, at least for me, that is. You know, I mean, even three is pushing it for me these days. So I, I, I can see... If you're drinking nine Bud Lights at 4.2%, you think about it, that's you know, maybe four and a half beers of, of what you know a hard, strong beer would be like or equivalent to. You just get filled up. But eight Bud Lights was doable for a couple of these guys. And I'm talking a literal, literal couple, two of these guys. And another concern I had was the quality of the dogs. They went with Nathan's hot dogs. Very smart move. And I believe they were the 14 packs. I didn't count them, but I think... Just looking at it, I was like, yeah, you know. But the main, also a main thing too, no word on the buns, but they didn't appear to be whole wheat. So that was that was all good. That was very very smart move. So you had the Bud Light, Nathan's hot dogs, and white buns. Win win win. And as far as the the as far as the contestants, they had nine skaters, of course, from all over the world compete. So JoJo Santos from Louisville, uh, Texas. He was rocking the element element tattoo, and I, I see him working. You know, giving props to one of the main sponsors, one of the main sponsors that like kind of helped seal the deal for the because I think they were going to offer what was it ninety nine dollars, but then Element stepped in and made it to almost a grand, so nine hundred ninety nine dollars. I think I, I have that right, 
But either way, they were a huge part of this contest. So, of course, they're going to show him rocking those element tattoos, of course. And then we had Ben Campbell from Portland, Oregon. Then you had Gus Buss, who was from uh, Oregon. I think he said he flew out from New York, though. He was out and you know, out and about. Felipe from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Anthony, and now let me see if I can get his name right. So, Giovanniello. 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 Okay, so that's not too bad. I, I mean, when I wrote it down, I was like, oh, damn, I'm going to be able to say that right. He's from Staten Island, New York. Trent Elkins from Tacoma, Washington. And he made a point, and will this pay off? But he said he's regularly trains. I mean, or drinks nine beers. Take note. And Eric from Connecticut. And then Anthony Morales, you know, from Clifton, New Jersey. He drank a couple of shots of vodka before he got there, and he had a shot of Modelo in hand. I was like, that's a kind of a bold move there, Cotton. And they even had Ian Mishnah on the mic asking. <laughs> Ian's probably was like in his brain, he's like, why am I asking this? Well, I, I don't get paid for this. But he was asking, is throwing up allowed? Throwing up okay, thumbs up or down? The crowd, of course, you know, they said throwing up is all good. Throwing up is good, guys. Yeah. Just bring it on. Bring it on. And Alex Raspa was the host. And once things got started, it didn't take too long for, like, the skaters to kind of drop off like flies. No shock at all, right? I mean, all of them made it through the first two rounds. But then it was all uphill from there, like literal uphill battle from there. Anthony G, he tapped out after three. Eric from Connecticut was done after three as well. And our pregame guy, what do you know, Anthony M, threw in the towel after round four. You think, dude? You think? I mean, his belly and liver, they were already pushed to the max, to the limit. I mean, not a good strategy in the end. You know, he pre-gained with vodka, pre-gained with Modelo, should have saved that space. That's just me, you know, from an, from an expert 999 challenge critic here. JoJo, he was done after five, after round five, as well as Gus, gone after five. Bye, Gus. Sorry, Gus. And then Ben from Portland, he was out after round six. So look at that, five, 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 four, couple threes, and then it came down to the final two, Trent and Felipe. You know, Trent, you know, as I said, he trains with nine beers on the regular, you know, against Felipe, who said, you know, he just got a new job, he's broke, he hasn't eaten, in, he hadn't eaten in 24 hours, and I'm not going to tell you which of the winner who won, I'm not going to tell you who won, okay, you just have to check it out and see. But it was a very close one. It was very close race, very close challenge, however you want to say this. But was I entertained? Hell yeah, I was. And when you do watch it, though, pause it at 3 minutes and 21 seconds, okay? Right at the moment when they have the winner with his friends, they're smiling, you know, kind of et cetera. I love the nod to the 80s freeze frame right there. Oh, right before the credits? I was like, hell to the yeah, editors. I see you there. You know what song popped in my head, though, right then and there? Joe Esposito's, you're the best around. No one's going to ever let you down. You're the best around. No one's going to ever let you down. I don't know the full lyrics to that song, but you get what I'm saying. Karate Kid. That popped in my head. I was like, yes, dude. Hell yeah to the, you, you, I mean, I was just basically saying, you go, winner of the 999 challenge, which I'm not going to spoil. You go. First ever, which I think it might be the last ever 999 challenge, but I don't know. But then again, if you're listening to this show in the future and have no idea about this challenge, odds are you're probably going to know the winner anyway. So, I, I mean, I could just say his name. I mean, this person's going to become a household name after this contest. He's probably already is right now, guaranteed. So you could thank me. It's a nice gesture that I'm not spoiling it for you. But... This guy, he's going to be on a wheeze box in the near future. He's going to be famous anyway. He's going to be on all the talk shows. Dude is going to blow up after this. 9-9 Challenge is a, is a stepping stone in his life, in his career. Trajectory, whew, dude's flying now. Flying. But great stuff. But, but I do have to end it with one final question. And dare I phrase it? Do I phrase it as, as an assumption, though? Much like when we all go to Airbnbs or hotels and maybe leave a little mess, you know, some garbage in the cans, sheets on the on the ground, some soap on, on the ground on the tub, maybe. It's not a hundred percent. We're on vacation. We can kind of live a little. I really hope 
but I think I know the answer here. That someone left a 20 spot for the grounds crew. Just a 20 or more. 50 would have been better. Or even 100. Just a little tip as a as a thank you slash sorry. We uh threw up everywhere. Threw up in the cans. By the fence. Over there. Over here. On the blacktop. Everywhere. They're just vomit. <laughs> projectile because it was thumbs up it was okay ian asked and he got it can you imagine like <laughs> clocking into work that day and just seeing the carnage i'd be like what kind of basketball game was played here last night is this a skate park why is it all slippery what is that is that it smells like hot dog it smells like hot dog water I don't know. Maybe I'm too nice, but I would have at least circled back and left a you know post-it note for the crew. Or you know, uh, even better yet, hey guys, let's you know what? Let's go back. We'll get a hose. We're just gonna spray it down just a little bit for our dudes. So they take care of our skate park. They take care of our basketball court. Let's just help them out a little bit. We just hose it over in that corner over there. Maybe there's a drainage ditch or something. And then I would tell them to check it out. You know, hey you guys, make sure you check it out when when you uh, you're on your lunch break. Either way, throw up and all, vomit it all and all. It looks like this was a success. I didn't check, it didn't, or at least I didn't write down the numbers of how many views it got, but I'm pretty sure it got a pretty good amount. I mean, will it be back next Memorial Day weekend? I think it was Memorial Day weekend, right? Right? Will it be back, Ben? Will it? But the, that's one other funny thing, too, I thought about, too, is this bad boy should have been done, like, during July. Maybe not the 4th of July weekend, you know, going up against Joey Chestnut, but the theme of July and hot dogs, shoving them down your throat and vomiting and beer and Bud Light and 4.2% ABV, it's July. You know, don't go up against the, the Chestnut, San Jose represent, I have to mention that. Don't go, you can't go up against the ratings like that, but... I don't know. When you think about Memorial Day, you think about those we have lost and all of uh, just our various wars over the years in the military. You know, it's just not, it's not a, when people say, Happy Memorial Day! It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what it is. It's, it's Memorial Day. We're reflecting. It's not happy. I mean, it could be happy in a sense, but when you hear memorial and happy, you don't really think of dogs and vomit and throwing up and chugging beers just saying so maybe next year's july bring it back ben okay I, I know you've got plenty of clicks on this you gotta i'm sure your roi is good nathan's hot dogs bud light and the cheap hot dog buns it's a pretty good budget i bet they can change it up too you know make it a a nine what's the the burpiest soda out there nine dr peppers for like do like a kid's version and then you'd have to say it's or or is throw up okay? Yeah, get the kids to throw up. And then you could have like nine coffees for like the older like legends category for the skaters over fifty. Oh, you know what? No way. I can totally see like Joa spinning off a version of this too. Getting monster involved. Having the 10, 10, 10 challenge, ten hot dogs, ten kick flips, and ten monster energy drinks. Actually, you know what? That that's probably a bad a bad, bad idea. Hearts would explode. I mean, he talked about, I talked about this last time, he talked about having like a panic attack and drinking. Can you imagine drinking 10 of those bad boys, the 16 ounces? Whoo! But I think, hey, Ben, I think you're on to something here. That's what a long winded point that I was trying to make. I think you're, you're on to something here. And let me know when you have a you know, barrier stop too. Preferably in San Jose. I mean, I'll take the train to San Francisco, drive to San Francisco if need be. And I'll tell you what, I'll bring the post notes and a 20 spot. Okay? Sound like a deal? Rocking the liquid IV, lemon, lime, and water today, yo. It's late Sunday night. Got to stay hydrated. Got to get ready for tomorrow. So I guess keeping it on the topic of Jankum, Ian Mishnah 
scored the interview that he had been hunting for since he said since he started skating, which I don't know how long that's been, but it's a huge get nonetheless. You know, I, I knew that it was gonna come down to either Jenkum, Nine Club, or mostly skateboarding. Those were my three picks of like who could pull it off? Who could actually do this? Drag Rocco out. He's already come out of retiring retirement, but who could get them on their show? So it makes complete sense that Jankum sealed the deal. Ian even recorded himself cold calling Rocco. I think it was in 2018. And they tried again like four years later. Yeah, 2018. Tried again four years later. He got him live on the phone in 2022. And only because they, he said they, they thought that he thought that they were like the uh, Tesla dealer or something like that. So he got lucky. It was funny, though, when he heard Rocco pick up, though. And it reminded me of the time when I was in sales and doing cold calls and assuming that the phone was just going to ring and ring and ring. You knew after, like, the third ring, oh, all right, cool. I, I got to leave a voicemail. Got to leave my best voicemail. You're kind of like, all right. And, I gotta, and I'm got i going to get some credit on the board for call and call time. Yeah, baby. Yeah, if you've ever been in sales and, and had your calls and your call time tracked and on display for all to see, you, you know all about having to leave messages, trying to leave the longest messages possible. <laughs> and, and what's funny is that, much like with Ian, you'd always get someone to pick up when you least expected it. Very rarely, a third ring, it's probably going to voicemail. But then on the other hand, sometimes, right, say he's just about to go to lunch or something, or, or I was about to leave. You say, all right, I'll give one more call. I'll give one more dial. Get that, that number up there. And, you know, it's the other sales rep next to me has only have 20 calls by now. I'm going to have 21. And then, bam. Oh, hello, Mr. Customer. Uh, uh. That was Ian DeRocco. <laughs> and though he did a great job of stating his purpose, you know, he because even though when he caught him off guard, it, it obviously worked, and he was able to chat with him via video conference for a little while before ta- you know making his trek all the way to Hawaii to finish up his, his interview. So video conference to start, won him over. I don't know how many they had because he said, you know, after these calls, I still had more questions, so I decided to fly to Hawaii to ask him some more and be with him in person. Well, damn, that's how evasive Rocco is. That's, and that's how important of a get this was. Think about that. Well, most guys or most just humans – Someone of that nature, they're like, you know, all right, you got 30 minutes. You get what you get. I mean, he's so hard to track down. He's been retired for 20 years, living the life, going wherever and whenever he feels like. He took that much time, a lot of time, to talk to Ian. But then again, that sounds like an amazing life to me, too. Can you imagine that? Ah, you know what? I'm going to New Zealand. You can call me tomorrow if you want. All right, cool, cool. I'll call you. Know, he calls. All right. Well, you know what, man? I'm flying back. I'm going to Jamaica uh, this afternoon. You, you know, you call me tomorrow. You know, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's it. I mean, that dude was in New Zealand for the cold call and then ended the interview in Hawaii. I mean, that's a huge difference than, say, maybe him being in Santa Monica. You know, Ian tracked him down and maybe he was in New York and he's like, all right, I'll fly from New York to you or vice versa. Or, Are you coming out to New York? It was all it was not within the states. No, he, dude, he had to get some mileage in to make this work. It took years, took decades. Like I said, I don't know how long Ian's been skating. I'm assuming it's been a, at least 10 years, maybe more, since he started skating. He's been tracking this dude down, maybe two decades. But I want to point out something here. I think the true MVP didn't get mentioned fully. I mean, he did a little bit. But the true MVP in my eyes, I mean, Ian did a lot of the work. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything from that, but was it was Rodney Mullen. Did you see that email? Actually, let me pull it up again and read it here. It's insane. Here we go. So this was dated October 27th, 2022 at 8.53 and 28 seconds p.m. ETD. And all the subject said, Ian Mishnah is awesome. No exclamation point either. I got to point that out. But here, here's what it said. Hi, Steve. A few days ago, Ian Mishnah texted to say that he had been in touch and enjoyed talking with you. Ian and I have been friends for years, and I just wanted to give you a personal note on how talented and good-hearted he is. Point being, it just gave me a smile to know you two are connecting. Semicolon. Whatever you're working on could be really cool. 
that was gangsta. That's what sealed the deal. Quote, it just gave me a smile to know that you two are connecting. Whatever you are working on could be really cool. That, that part right there, that's right then and there is what sealed the deal. He didn't even need to try and do the whole, well, Ian has next Tuesday and next Thursday if you're available. Which one are you, which one do you want to lock in for? You ever try that in sales? Remember that, the whole tactic? I used to hate that. I used to hate trying, I used to hate trying that and I used to hate having it done to me. Well, hey, Rick, well, you know, uh, we have next Tuesday and next Thursday. Which one you want? Neither. I don't want any of them. Why? Click. Stop bothering me, dude. All Rodney needed to do was like, all Rodney needed to say, and all he did say was, whatever you're working on could be really cool. Rocco was immediately like, we're not working on anything. What are you talking about? But then again, knowing Rodney, he might be on to something here. Damn it, Rodney, you're always right. I studied for 20 years because you were you just made me feel wrong all the time. And now you're right again. Get Ian Mishnah on the phone right now, damn it. But way to go, Rodney. Dude. Talking about getting some pull. Rodney has some pull. He saw through brick walls right there. Rodney freaking Mullen, MVP. Rock, Rocco interview MVP. Hey, Rodney, can I can I put you down as like an employment reference? Can you put in a good word for me down the road? I don't know, man. Whatever you're working on with Rick, it could be really cool. See, he can work for a multi multi multiple avenues. Rodney's on to something here, man. But regarding the interview, though, it was a great interview. And it was 20, think about this, 20 to 30 years in the making. How many interviews has he done over the years? Not too many. Ian was well prepared. His questions were great. His responses were great, too. He got Rocco to open up quite a bit, actually. And it was a nice banter. He got him to kind of laugh, kind of joke. Especially when he was talking about, like, the man who sold the world and how... He didn't really like it, how it wasn't supposed to be about him, and just how, how hard it was for him to have regrets, but then also at the same time, hard to be proud. This is coming from Rocco. As he said, I was just paving the way with good intentions. We also got to hear a little bit about what his role is going to be at sidewalk distribution. And to me, it sounds more like a consulting role. And that's kind of what I figured. I think I mentioned last time when the announcement, I'm like, I don't think he's going to have an office in there. He's not going to be some full-time employee. I think he's just there as like kind of, you know, leverage backbone. He talks about working with geniuses. So he obviously sees something in this crew, something in all the, 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 the founders that is something there, but he'll probably be in New Zealand or Malibu, or wherever the hell he feels like, you know, clocking in for work. He could be clocking in from Jamaica, from Ireland. Who knows? They'll be getting him on a Zoom call. And I, I think just what he'll probably, and I think he mentioned this too, is that he's, I can see him being a huge part of the graphics, and namely the stories behind him. That's one thing that really stood out to me too, is he talked about just the graphics they made at World and just the stories behind them. So that's a very important thing to him. So maybe that's what he's going to be part of. You know, not necessarily designing them. Maybe he'll say, oh, you know, let's. how about, what about this? Or how about this? Or what this graphic, you know, and different artists. You know, who knows? But I, I, I can see him on the artistic side, maybe less on the, you know, the industry side, but I could be wrong. But I think the graphics, at least the graphics and the story side, seem to be kind of a sweet spot for him. That's, that's what I took away from it. But my favorite part of this video was when Ian busted out Scrabble and Rocco went straight into hustle mode. Did you see that? If you haven't yet, go watch it. Come back. I don't want to spoil it for you. But he basically asked, what are we playing for? Usually we play for companies. <laughs> what? 
He's all, but then he said, but I don't have a company at the moment, so I'll put up a hundred thousand dollars, and then if if I win, I get your company. What? <laughs> oh damn! I mean, Ian, he offered up a hundred bucks. So what? I don't know. What do you want to play for a hundred bucks? Dude's playing for companies. Ian, what? What? I was like, damn, dude, that's bold. That's gangsta. But think about this too. How awesome did Ian feel on that flight home? He's like, little grin, like a slow pat on the back, knowing that Rocco knows what's up with Jenkum. He knows a good thing when he sees it. It's probably Ian probably like screamed and it was probably a red eye. He's like, damn right, better recognize. I know. I know my value. What are you looking at, baby? Turn around. You got some crying to do? Rocco knows how valuable it is after the 999 challenge and future 888 challenges. He wanted his company for a game of Scrabble. <laughs> Ian's like eating Cheetos, wiping his Cheetos on his pants. Oh, I'll give you 100 bucks. Rocco wanted his company, guys. Think about that. He wanted Jankum. Dead serious. He wasn't joking. We usually play for companies. That's when I'm like, you know, hey, whoa, hey, look at the time. I got to catch a flight. Uh, I just realized I, I'm not that good at Scrabble. Uh, why don't we play Wordle for like 150 bucks? We'll do that challenge. <laughs> $100,000 or Jankum. Woo! I'm not going to spoil it for you, but Ian still owns the company. But, I mean, Rocco's probably, think, think about this. Rocco's probably in New Zealand right now. He's got a giant, you know those giant heads? The giant head of Ian's like face, his whole cranium on the wall. Underneath it says Jenkum, written. It's it's handwritten, maybe with his left hand or his non-dominant hand. And he's sitting there on the couch just mumbling the words, It's mine. Oh, it's mine. Yeah, connect four. Next time I see Ian, it's on. I'm gonna hypnotize him and give me the company. Kind of launches in this maniacal laugh, like one we like that would scare everyone. We're like, oh, maybe, maybe he's off his rocker. So be careful, Ian. Don't let this interview be a double-edged sword, man. Don't, don't let it open up this whole can of worms. Wouldn't that rock the industry though? <laughs> if Rocco's back. He's at Sidewalk Distribution. He's taking over Jenkum. He's coming for Thrasher. No! Oh, he's shutting down all podcasts. Nomago's gone. He just stepped on Nomago like a fly. You're nothing, dude. I don't know. We play for companies. What do you want to play for? Can you imagine being able to go, you know what? Let's do that. Yeah. I'll take your Scrabble challenge, dude. What's the worst going to happen? You just take over Jankum, dude. You find out how hard, how hard my job is. I got to fly around New Zealand and Hawaii to get your ass on the mic. You, you think you could do that? Huh? You've been retired for 20 years. Good luck with that. But the final score of the Scrabble was 242 for Ian. Steve had 359. So over 100 points. Whew. I don't know what they talked about. Because think about this. like When they started talking about it, the editor came in and said, whoa, 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 we're going to just kind of slowly dissolve into this other conversation. You notice that? Listen to it again. It turns into like, it, it was kind of overlapped. I was like, well, what I like to do is blah, 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 blah. Right as you're saying, we like to play for this. It was, it was it's kind of, it, it, it was a nice seamless transition. But I do want to know, what what did you guys gamble on? What did you guys bet on? Obviously, Jankum's still in, in, intact. So, Ian wasn't caught up in the moment. But what did you guys bet on? Was it 100 bucks? Some Cheetos? Fist bump? I want to know, what did you guys bet on? Because you know he's not going out without a bet. He's like, Ian, you got to bet for something, dude. You got to bet on something. I can't. I need the adrenaline. I need this. But we, notice how I'm throwing we, we dodged a bullet on that one. Am I right? Am I right? I, mean, I haven't played that game in a while. But something tells me that Rocco's pretty good at it. 359? Is that a good score? I mean, it's got to be, right? 
And it and that says a lot about Ian too. Two hundred forty two, and he's he's barely he's brand new to the game. He's like, I I don't even know how to play this game. So how do you know? That's a hustler right there. Pool shark, you know. I don't know how to play pool. Oh yeah, right. Well, put your car keys down here. We'll talk. Put your house keys down here too. Oh, don't worry. You have to, you don't have to check with your wife, Rick. No, no, no. We'll bet for your house. You got pink slips around? Are they in your safe? You just get them. We'll just put them right here. We'll be fine. Steve was hustling, or he tried to hustle, but I don't know what they bet on. I don't know what the the results are. I, I'd love to know. If anyone knows, please let me know. All I know is that Eaton still has the company. Jenkum is in still in good hands, for now. And when you do check it out, though, make sure to pay attention to the last two minutes of the interview. Where this is this was the main reason why Ian flew to Hawaii in the first place. We got to hear some good insight into his current state of mind after all these years, after 20 years, after retirement, his vision of the future of skateboarding. He had a lot of good things to say about that. But most importantly, his concern about the skateboarding industry. So, and, and, and ending it all, of course, with a mic drop moment in that last minute. That was like, boom, duh. It's very well said. Take it from him. Future uh, company owners, even ones now that need to pivot. Find out what you like, what you're passionate about, what you're really stoked on. Make that and sell that. Sounds simple, but he just kind of broke it down. It's like, that's what you do. It's a total mic drop moment. But I do have one last thing to add, though, or, or to ask. Maybe I'm digging on this one or, or, or reaching a little bit too much, but was there any significance to the Simpsons clip that they showed? And I guess there, there was, was there a jump cut too? They kind of had it and they jump cut and it had the words, don't replace them. I'll know. That's what was said. Am I, like I said, am I reading too much into that? Or is there something there? I don't know. I never really followed the Simpsons because I, I what happens with me with TV shows, if there's more than one season and I get more than like three seasons behind, I get overwhelmed and I just will not commit. I'm like, I can't, I can't. And I think they're on what, like season 40 or whatever it is. I, there's no way in hell I could ever go back and watch every episode of that show. So Simpson heads out there. Is there something behind that? Don't replace them. I'll know. They showed that. Was it just random timing? And cause they do, they had the, the, the characters were waving goodbye to someone or some people they know too. I don't know. I just had to point that out. Come on. Why was that shown? Why did the editors want to show that? I mean, they were just watching TV, but why did they have to kind of get a close up to that? I knew I got the point. They were watching this together, hanging out. Anyway, just let me know. Oh, and one last thing. I hate to break it to all the fellow skateboarding podcasters out there. There's no need for any more uh, Rocco interviews. This one kind of did it all. Are you are you gonna are you gonna argue against that? I mean, it's it's gonna be hard, kind of hard to top this one. Just saying, you know, I hate to be blunt, and and of course, I'm speaking to myself here too. Hey, Rick, we can get Rocco on your show. What the hell am I gonna talk about? He he summed it up. There's nothing else to ask. I think we we wait at least five to ten years and kind of see what he does with sidewalk distribution. And then, then we can kind of attempt to track him down in whichever country he's at or wherever he's surfing at the moment and then find out, hey, it's been a while since we heard from you. You talked to Ian over Jenkum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you own the company now. Congrats to you on that. Remember, remember Ian, though, the former owner? But, yeah, I hate to break to you guys. I, all you fellow skate, you know, podcasts out there, it's just, it, it's, it can't be done. I mean, if Nine Club is a chance, like, why? Why are you guys going to do it? Most skateboarding, I hate to break it to you guys. What, what are you going to ask him? What else is there to ask? He's, he, he summed it up. Ian did a great job. But I guess it just in the meantime, let's just celebrate what was just given to us. So well done to Ian and team. That was, dare I say it, decades in the, in, in the making. Lots of cold calls in the making, and it paid off. It was a great interview. So if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you can find it all on the Jenkum, you know, YouTube site, the 999 challenge, which was 
like I said, very interesting. And of course, Steve Rockland interview, which was decades in the making. So great content. Not surprised. Jenkum is high quality. So there's there's a reason why he wanted to, to, to play for that, you know, to, to win over that company. Yeah. Smart, smart man. I'll see you guys next week.